Yo, 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 mahabayo, what's up, sup, sup, and welcome to And I Thank You, our time and space to learn life lessons from lessons about life. Finally, after more than 20 episodes, more or less, of introducing you to concepts that we needed to know before we can jump into biodiversity, this is another one of those. Yeah, but we're, but we're close. We're really close. I think we can all agree that life on Earth is awesomely diverse, right? Right? But how much life is there on Earth? I mean, estimates range from as little as like 8.7 million to about 1 trillion, depending on your sources. And that's a lot of species to sort, classify, and organize, and describe, and name. Well, it's convenient for us to use local names and common names when we do describe or talk about these species on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes it can get confusing when we really want to describe a particular species to other people. It doesn't help that we have a lot of languages, so things can get lost in translation. Plus, there are times when one organism can actually have, like, so many common names. Like, for example, the American bear. What if there are more than one type of bear in America? Don't they have other bear in America? Then, let's call it a black bear. Okay, but in Asia, we also have black bear in Asia. American black bear, it's American and black. No matter what country you're from or no matter what language you speak, everybody knows exactly what bear you are talking about when you refer to it as Ursus Americanus. So you see, giving an organism a scientific name, it really upholds a strict, rigid, standardized set of rules that are upheld by experts in the fields of taxonomy, systematics, and phylogenetics. Together, these three branches of biology look at how organisms should be described, named, or sorted based on how closely related they are to each other. Now, how does this work? The scientific name is actually part of a larger scheme of sorting organisms into groups or ranks. From your basic grade school biology or maybe high school biology, you might be familiar with at least seven to eight of these taxonomic ranks. Let's start with the most inclusive group to the most specific group. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. I obviously had that in front of me. Those are quite a lot, and if you're not really familiar with biology or you don't really want to pay attention to biology that much, it really doesn't matter. So how do you remember something like this if you just happen to need it for your exam? Back in college, the mnemonic that we were taught was kings play chess on fine-grained sand. If that mnemonic does not work for you, then perhaps Lucky B might be able to help you. The mnemonic king play chess or fine grain sand, maybe that not relevant for you. If you want a different mnemonic, maybe you think you order food in Chinese restaurants. So waiter tell you, okay, what are you going to have? And you're regular at the restaurant. So you're like frustrated. Waiter know my order already. I've been here eating for a long time. So you say something like, da, kung pao chicken or fried garlic spinach. That's it. Kung Pao Chicken or Fried Garlic Speech. You put the, that word for domain, and then king, Kingdom, Phylum, Class, Order, Family, Genus, Species, that would be like Kung Pao Chicken or Fried Garlic Spinach. That's it, very easy. Or maybe you have some sort of dietary restrictions or whatnot, so you can also order food a bit of a different way, especially when you're out with friends. Damn. Kung puede chicken or fish, guys. Salamat. If I remember from college correctly. So like phylum is like if you're talking about animals, phylum cordata, ganyan. But like what if you're talking about plants? You don't use the rank phylum, you use the rank division. So paano mo naman matatandaan yung mga ganun? You can do something like, damn. Kung di chicken or fish, gulay. Salamat. There. What diba? So parang ganun la. Either way, kind of think of it like you're ordering food. And I think a lot of people will always remember that because we need to eat every day, diba? Anyway, in lang naman. Now that you sort of have an idea of how to remember those different taxonomic ranks, 
how exactly do they work? For example, let's go back to that American black bear. The domain under which it belongs is domain eukarya, which means that all organisms in this domain have cells whose genetic material are enclosed in a nucleus. Next, it belongs under kingdom animalia, which means that of all the eukaryotes, some of them are animals. So the bear is part of that kingdom. And in that kingdom, there is a phylum called chordata, which means that among all the animals, some of them are chordates. Under phylum chordata, there is a class called mammalia, which means that of all the chordates, some of them sort of have hair or fur and they kind of have titties and boobs and, you know, secrete milk through mammary glands. Mammals. Among all of the mammals, some of those are carnivores or flesh-eating mammals. And among those carnivores, there is a family called the bear family, Ursidae, so we're getting close. And then finally, we get to the genus, which is Ursus, and then species, Americanus. So the scientific name is actually composed of the final two most specific taxonomic ranks, the genus and the species. To illustrate my point, I'm going to take you to this shelf of stuff right here. The broadest classification we can have for the items on the shelf is things. Now, if you wanna be more specific, things made of paper automatically that kind of limits my search to th these guys over in this shelf and the ones over here plus that poster and then maybe that box over there because it's still made of paper now i want to be a bit more specific let's go to print materials that means i'm still going to be looking at this shelf that poster not that box anymore but in those books right there print materials what specifically am i looking for books now that I'm looking for books, I'm not going to be searching there because those are just lab manuals and worksheets from college. So I'm going to kind of focus my search on this shelf right here. What kind of books am I looking for? Textbooks. I know that I'm really not going to be including the books there because those are just comics and dictionaries. I'm going to be focusing on this section of my library. Specifically, what kinds of textbooks? Biology textbooks. What kind of biology textbook? I'm looking for ecology. We're moving down here. You see that book right there? Specifically, what ecology book? Ecology by Smith and Smith. And so almost immediately, I found the book that I wanted. And if I had more books with the same title, Ecology by Smith and Smith, all of those will be included. The thing with scientific names is it not only includes the individual, but the entire species. So if we're talking Ursus americanus, or Ursus tibetanus, or Ursus arctos, or Ursus maritimus, then we're talking about all the individuals belonging to that species. In the same way that we are going to look at like all the ecology books that have that title. So that means that the rest of the books that are scattered there out in the world, Elements of Ecology by Smith and Smith, that's part of the whole thing that I'm looking for. If you're a hardcore biologist or taxonomist, you will perhaps be familiar with the fact that there are many inserts to these main levels. So you might have heard of like superclass, infraclass, suborder, subfamily. The most important thing to remember is that there are taxonomic ranks from the most inclusive to the least inclusive, and that sort of helps you narrow down what species exactly you want to talk about. In future episodes, we will actually be moving up and down these taxonomic ranks depending on whether we are going to be talking about a particular species. In that case, I will give the scientific name. Or if we're just talking about a larger group of organisms, then we can just talk about like the order or the family of certain organisms. Are you serious? I, okay, I know. They're hard to spell and they're hard to pronounce. And they're made of things that you just can't remember because they're written in Latin. But scientific names really say a lot about an organism. I mean, much like how historically human names actually tell us a lot about a person's place of residence or something about their features or something about who they're related to. Scientific names also fulfill those functions and in fact, way more. 
And so I highly encourage you to get to know the life around you, not just on a first name basis, but on a scientific name basis. Because in science, the name is more than just a name. It's a story. O paano naman kayo mga kabayo? What life lessons have you learned today? Leave it in the comments right below. If there's anything else that I have missed or anything else you'd like to add to the discussion, just go ahead and put it down there. For those of you who would like to learn more about the binomial system of nomenclature, naming, and sorting organisms, I recommend that you watch these videos right here. And you go ahead and knock yourself out. And I will see you guys next time. Kita kits, mga bagits. And I thank you. Kita yung ilaw. Oh no. Bye guys. GoPro stop recording.